Amy Dietrich, 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 Dietrich. Amy Dietrich, Amy, I'm sorry. I can't say your last name. She is struggling with something that so many people struggle with. I know I struggled with it for about, I can't even tell you, months. When I first started budgeting, I couldn't get it right. It confused the heck out of me. I finally figured it out. So I am going to share with you how to budget weekly on paychecks that maybe your paycheck doesn't necessarily cover your expenses in that week. Hey guys, I'm Wendy Valencia. If you are new to my channel, my husband Mauricio and I are paying off $350,000 worth of debt. It's a lot. We're getting out. It's going to be gone soon. Well, not real soon, but soon enough. So today I wanted to walk you through setting up a budget, a weekly budget, so that you are paying your zero-based budget monthly, but doing it week by week so you're not overdrafting your account from week to week. So what we're going to do, the very first thing I want you to do, and if you want to do this with me, more power to you. I did a spreadsheet, see, spreadsheet. But you can just get a piece of paper, whatever you want to do. And the first thing you're going to do is you are going to figure out your income and your outgo. So the first thing I want you to do is write down every source of income you will have over the next month. Your paycheck, maybe a spouse's paycheck. And then maybe you do YouTube or you sell stuff on Etsy or you you have returns from like Amazon, those count as income. You're gonna list absolutely everything. And then you are gonna list all of your expenses, all your bills, your food, your gas and electricity, your Netflix, your iTunes, what have you. If you spend it during the month, you're gonna list it out. And then you are going to go to your bank account and you are gonna look over the last three months and see the things that you're actually spending money on if you're using a debit card. If you're using cash, you're gonna to have to guesstimate. Maybe you have receipts, look at your receipts. But figure out how much you're actually spending. And then my last piece of advice is to go to this month, last year, the budget, budget the month you're budgeting for go to last year's bank account and look at the expenses you had that month. I on for this the purposes of this video will be budgeting for October. So I would go to October last year and see what kind of expenses. I know you're going to see stuff for like candy, you're going to see for Halloween, you're going to see Halloween costumes, you're going to see we have multiple birthdays in this month that we deal with. So then the next most important thing you're going to do is you're going to assign dates to everything. So let's say you get paid on the 15th and the 30th of every month. So you're gonna take your first paycheck for the, the purposes of this tutorial, it's gonna be $1,000 and it's gonna go on the 15th. And your second paycheck is another $1,000 and it's gonna go on the 30th. There are certain things in the month that are gonna be flexible. Like let's say you're giving and maybe you need to buy an item of clothing or something that doesn't have a specific date. I write flex in the date column on my sheet. Once you have done all of that, you wanna total up your income and total up your outgo. And make sure that your income exceeds your outgo because if your income does not exceed your outgo, we've got a whole different issue to deal with. And if that is your problem, leave me a comment down below and I can make a whole video on what to do when your outgo exceeds your income. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to have $455 extra that we have to play with every month. And most importantly, it's really, really, really important to understand that you're going to make mistakes for at least three months on your budget. So maybe starting the debt snowball is great, but maybe set some extra aside for mistakes because it's going to happen. It's really, really, really going to happen. You are going to make errors and there are going to be math problems and, and things are going to come up that you're not expecting. So 
make sure you have a little bit of cushion in your budget for those things. Or maybe instead of $1,000, you have an additional $500 set aside in case something comes up. So you'll just be able to go ahead and take money from there and pay for it and it won't screw you up. Because I'm telling you, if you put every single cent towards debt in the first three months, you're gonna end up hurting yourself. It, those first three months of budgeting are really complicated. Then the next step, and I'm gonna walk you through this, you're gonna print out a calendar with the big spaces like this, and you are going to start filling in everything on the date that it's due. So the first thing you're gonna put down are your paychecks, and then you are going to put down each individual item on the day that it's due. Now, the things that are flexible, do not put those on the calendar yet. So what I did is I took each week and I put the total of income, so whatever I earned, and then the total of outgo for each week. There's a few things you need to take note of. Clothing. You can set a monthly clothing allowance or in this particular scenario, we're putting in $15 because our spouse needs new underwear. So that's what we're gonna put it in for. But they, however you do clothing is up to you. Groceries. You're going to put in like your estimate, your total monthly expenses of groceries, but then you're going to divvy it up the way you spend it. For us, we shop once a week. We try not to go back to the grocery store except on Sundays. So for us, we're going to divvy it up $75 a week. But if you shop every two weeks, you would put it whatever days you shop every two weeks. Or if you shop once a month, you would put it you know, once a month, or if you maybe shop $200 and then just buy milk and eggs as you need them, then however you do your groceries, that's how you're going to do it. And then our debts, we're going to list the minimum payments only, only minimum payments. So do not start putting snowball money in yet. So then after you have totaled it up by income and outgo per week, you will see that in our second week, we actually have nothing coming in and $1,400.90 going out. So three weeks out of the month, we have more income than outgo and two weeks out of the month, we have more outgo than income. And this is where people get confused. So what you're gonna do is I always earn the money before I spend it. So what I earn this week actually goes to pay next week's budget. Somewhat complicated, but try and follow with me. It's best to work on a two week cycle. What you're earning for two weeks goes to pay two weeks and what you're earning for the next two weeks goes to pay the next two weeks. So as you can see in your first two weeks, you actually don't earn enough to pay for your expenses. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go back to September and you make $1,000 here on the 30th of September is probably gonna be, if this is the 31st, this'll be, you'll make $1,000 here on the 30th of September, okay? And you're not gonna spend that money. You're gonna add that $1,000 to pay your whole first week. So that's what I mean when you're weak, you earn the money before you spend it. So that $1,000 is gonna pay this week and this 750 here is going to pay the week after that. Now, you will see that you do have more than $750 here. So you're gonna use what you have left over from your $1,000 here, because $1,000 and your $750 is $1,750, and that is actually gonna total more than these two expenses together. Anything that's left over from this $1,000, because you're going to have your $150 in expenses for this week. So you're going to have $850 left over from this $1,000, which you're going to carry to this week. 
So then your $850 will pay your $75 in groceries, your life insurance, your car insurance, your MasterCard, your rent, your phone, and your childcare because your $750 plus your $850 will cover these bills. And then this week, you see on Monday, you're gonna earn $1,750 here on this one day because my paycheck and my spouse's paycheck come in on this day and that will cover this week and this week when you're first starting you're going to have to figure out if you have a situation like this where your outgo is more than your income in one particular week then you're going to have to figure out where your paychecks lie okay so that's why budgeting with a calendar is very, very, very important. Again, you're just going to pay your minimum payments and you're going to have your flexible things wherever you can fit them in when you have extra money. And so then what are you going to do with the extra? At the end of the month, you go ahead and you put money wherever you need to put it in the baby steps, maybe for your emergency fund, or maybe it's in baby step two and you start putting that extra money to your step in the debt snowball. That's up to you what you do with that extra. Now, again, if you are in a situation where your outgo is more than your income, then that is a whole different issue. If you are behind on your bills, then you need to go ahead and start putting that extra money to whichever bills you need to catch up on before you start your debt snowball because you've got to be current on your bills before you can start the debt snowball. It is very complicated and this is actually one of the reasons that Mauricio and I went to a monthly budgeting system so what we earn this month goes to pay next month's bills because it makes it so significantly easier. So what we did is with our overages for several months we ended up saving up that so we have the equivalent of of our payments for one month. It did take us several months to do, but we had that sitting in savings. So in September, I earn October's payments. So as our paychecks come in, I just deposit them into a savings account. And then on the first of the month, I drop that full amount into our checking account. And then I don't have to worry about whether I have enough money coming in or going out. I feel like that should be a goal that everybody strives for. Ultimately, it makes life so much easier. But in the beginning, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck, it is extremely difficult to do that. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.